the NFC West is interesting for multiple reasons, but we'll start with the Arizona Cardinals. They're lined at six and a half wins for the 2024 25 season. They're supposed to be or expected to be favored in five games, underdogs in 12 games. Last season, they had four wins. Um, looking at this team last season, Murray missed weeks one through nine. And um, I think this is his first first fully healthy off season. And um, they've been saying good things about him over there, you know, living in the in the gym, et cetera, et cetera, hearing good things about Murray. But I always just have it in the back of my mind. He seems like a guy who's injury prone. And um, I just really worry about that. Other than that, let's look at this team a little bit more. Um, I feel like early down success rate is a metric that explains this team pretty well. Um, you look at Murray, when he returned to the offense, they were better. You look at the first nine games without him, right? The early down success rate. They won it two of their first nine games. From week 10 to the rest of the season, they won it in half of their games. So it was better with Murray back out there. And you look at some other things they were doing well. It was the rushing, rushing game. It wasn't necessarily Murray doing it either. Um, 5.3 yards per carry. That's number one in the NFL. And like I said, it wasn't all Murray. It was uh, their number two in yards per carry, number two success rate, 43%, number two explosive run rate. And uh, this is from week 10 on. So it was the run game really. So that was, you know, they were having success with. When I think about why, maybe they just respect Murray a little bit more and it opened it up for them. Um, looking at this team a little bit closer, they drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. That gives Murray a weapon that, you know, he's needed and hasn't had. Maybe that could be a, a reason or, you know, why they can have success here. But the defense, the defense is, seems like it's going to be the problem here. It was one of the three teams to allow six yards per play last season. And they're the number three cheapest defense, you know, going into this season here. So I don't have a lot of confidence in them. It's, it's a really young team as far as the defensive side. They could get better. It may take some time. But out the gate, I'm thinking this is one of the teams that is a, a straight over team. That's really how I feel about them. A um, couple more things. Cardinals, reason I'm leaning towards under in this one, and the market is not agreeing. It was six and a half. I'm seeing it start to go up to seven. Um, that first 10 weeks, they got a really tough schedule before they have a bye. And the back end stretch of the season is where they have some cupcakes, but I don't trust them to win these any you know many of these big games in the beginning of the season. I don't trust Murray to stay healthy, so I'm just thinking you know will he even be there from weeks 12 on when they have these easy games? And I'm not confident in it. So I think the under whether I mean you want to get the best number, so seven seems like the way to go with the Arizona Cardinals. And uh, like I said. I'll look for overs with them, especially early in the year. Next, we have the L.A. Rams. So let me get over there. That's a little ways down the list. Rams lined at eight and a half wins. Last season, they had 10, and they're expected to be favored in 11 games, underdog in six. So for the Rams... The over at the eight and a half is like minus 150, minus 155. It's getting juiced over there. This was a team that started the season really slow last year, three and six, I believe, and they closed it really good, seven and one close to the season. And I think they just kind of figured out some things they were doing wrong and fixed them. Uh, they needed less shotgun. They needed more play action, and they needed more motion. They needed to throw to the outside, and they started to do those things and have success. They also – Start to target that running back a little bit more. Um, you do lose Aaron Donald. You, you know that's a big loss. And just looking at the defensive side of the ball, I mean, it, it's tough to trust when I look at the, the cheapest roster on defense in the entire league. The most expensive offense. They shouldn't have too many problems scoring as long as they stay healthy. Um, they do face the most difficult pass defenses in the league this year. Have a net prep of minus two, net rest of minus one. But I think this team figured something out last year, and they carried that momentum into this year. So 
They got 10 wins last year, just asking them, you know, to get nine. I think it's very doable. Very, very doable. And on a game-to-game basis, I'll be looking for this team to be an over team, just like I talked about um, the Cardinals. They fixed their offensive problems. They have the cheapest defense. They got they spent so much on offense. So all that lines up to be over team for the Rams game by game. I think it's over on their win total as well. And uh, we'll talk about the division a little bit. They are, I mean, we haven't even got to the favorite yet. So let's keep going down the list. The favorite should be next up here. And that is San Francisco 49ers. 49ers are lined at 11 and a half wins. They're supposed to be favored in every single game so far, um, are expected to be favored in every single game this season. Looking at this team, it's crazy, but just looking at it, I mean, they have been the top 10 most injured since Kyle Shanahan became a head coach. Last season, however, it was one of their healthiest years. They're number four healthiest team. But um, just thinking about that, that's very, very unlucky. And last year, they had a good team. They had a very poor schedule. Um, but they were able to overcome that because of the health, probably. So just knowing that they did it last year, where did they land at? They had 12 wins. It makes me hesitant because this team, I mean, they are extremely good. It's just the schedule is not very kind to them. And a combination of having, you know, back-to-back years, really poor schedules, like the net rest, net prep minus four, net rest minus six, they're just at a rest disadvantage so much throughout the season. Um, You have a lot of turnover on the defensive side of the ball for the San Fran team. I do, you know, Purdy has grown on me. I wasn't a big fan when he first got there, but he's been running the system well and doing things well there. Uh, one thing to note for this San Fran team is at a rest deficit of two or more days last season, they covered one out of four games. And the other 12, they were nine and three ATS. So um, that just tells you, not the team you want to be betting on, or rather you will have a lot of spots to bet against them this season when they're at the rest disadvantage. And from week seven on, that's really where the schedule starts to get tricky. Uh, let's just look at it here. You have and I'm just trying to see here. You have Kansas City, Dallas. I want to say this was one of the teams with three games in 10 days, but I'm not seeing it right now. I know that the schedule extremely unlucky to draw this back to back year. So that's really what I'm thinking here. Weeks. What I had highlighted is seven, eight, eleven, thirteen, fourteen, and eighteen are weeks that San Fran will be at a pretty big disadvantage. So um, I think that week seven against the Chiefs, Chiefs are coming off of a bye. I know it's a revenge game for the 49ers, but just things like that, it's not falling in the 49ers' way. So to get to 12 wins, I don't think I could bet that. I would have to be going with the under there. And last but not least, we'll take a look at the Seattle Seahawks. They are lined at seven and a half wins. And the under looks like plus 115. They're supposed to be favorites in five games so far this season. Underdogs in 12. Last season, they ended with nine wins. So a couple wins or one and a half above what they're being asked this year. When I think about this Seahawks team, that first year with Geno, I feel like, you know, we're not really going to get that anymore. We've seen Geno struggle, struggle under pressure. This is an offensive line that struggled. They also lost a starter on that offensive line. Um, They do. And we'll see how this works out. They do have a new offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb. He's talking about increasing the tempo. So he's going to try things to get this offense going. I know one thing. They need to be better in those three plus wide receiver sets. And they got all their, you know, their best guys out there. They haven't found ways to be successful. When you look at the numbers, it's been better when you have two of the three guys um, on the field. So if they can fix that, so everybody could be out there, which I think should be a focus of the new offensive coordinator, 
um that would that would be good for them but i just don't i don't trust it enough to put my money on it i do like the addition of mike mcdonald he's a good defensive coordinator but it's just a team that has a lot of things to improve on and i'll kind of need to see it before i believe it they also have the cheapest offensive line um in the 2024 season that's not good for a quarterback who's been struggling under pressure so i can understand why you might want to increase tempo you, you definitely want to get the ball out fast and um it could be a, a year of struggles for them net prep minus four for seattle net rest minus two i could only look at this team under um i just don't see a whole lot of reasons to be excited or to expect you know them to have a winning season so under seven and a half at plus money will be the way that i look this is or they are one of those teams who has three games in 10 days they will face i believe it's weeks five through seven i think it's the giants the niners and the falcons but um yeah schedule makers just didn't do them a good job they haven't shown us a whole lot to be excited for seattle seahawks under if we're looking at the division as a whole 49ers are the favorites at minus 210, followed by the Rams at plus 325. Then we have the Seahawks at plus 750 and the Cardinals at plus 1200. I, uh, you know, like I said, the 49ers are a really good team. They're expected to be favored in every single game, even at these rest disadvantages. So that's something that's really hard to bet against. Um, but the schedule, schedule is really, really brutal. They only got the 12 wins last year. Um, Back-to-back -back years with that schedule, I could see them falling off, especially if they don't get that health look that they did last year. So I'm looking at these other teams. I don't really trust Seattle or Arizona, but the Rams, my trust level is probably like, it's not where it needs to be to run to the window and place this wager. But like I said, they figured out what they were doing wrong last year. If they can build on that, they get Cooper Cup um, healthy, pair him with, uh Nakua and you know they should be able to do some good things over there for the Rams. So plus 325 could be worth a shot. I just I don't want my money on not that I, I would love to have my money against the 49ers. It just I, I can't bet them at that price given what they have to go through to get there. So division I'd have to roll with the Rams at plus 325 take a shot on them. Best bet for the NFC West. And before I give that, remind you guys, all of my work is at wagertalk.com. There's a link to my profile in the description. And you know, going back to the beginning of 2023, uh, the year 2023, I know I've gained over 100 units in general. So uh, if you'd like to be on board, you know where to find it. Obviously, I'll continue to do these videos. And um, we'll, ha we'll have daily videos all sports once again soon. So like to be involved you know where to find it best bet i'm gonna be honest i haven't i haven't played this division i haven't but um if i was it's hard to do it but 49 is under that 11 and a half it seems like a really solid bet um probably would have a little bit more confidence with the rams rams over eight and a half it is a little bit juice now but i just think that they carry that momentum into this next year and Nine wins for a team that won, what, 10 last year? Team that, you know, a little bit healthier. I feel like they should be better. So Rams over eight and a half will be my recommendation. And like, like I said, I always honest and straightforward with you guys. I didn't bet it yet, but this is how I feel. So NFC West is done, and we'll keep rolling right along.